Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Today is more of a concept video, but I wanted to share it with you as you can start applying it straight away. And it's how we can turn our garden paths into compost makers as well. The concept for this video is actually heavily inspired by Liz Zorab and her approach to wood chips. So let's hear from her how she uses that and then we're going to build upon that idea to actually create compost from our pathways. Back in 2015, 2016 when we moved to our previous home, I wanted something really attractive on our pathways but I also needed something very cheap and I managed to get hold of a whole load of wood chippings uh, from a tree surgeon. So I put them down on the pathway. And within about six months, I noticed that the areas that I had most heavy traffic, where I walked the most, uh, it was starting to break down uh, and crumble into a, a deep, dark, rather nice consistency. And so uh, with the action of the wind and the rain and me walking on it, and also uh, the ducks walking on it and pooping on it, uh, the wood chips very quickly started to look like compost. And so once it had got to a stage where it started really looking like compost, I would just scoop it up uh, and put it straight into the raised beds and then replace that section with fresh wood chips. If for some reason you haven't come across Liz before, definitely go say hello and check out her fantastic channel. So in this garden, a lot of the wood chip and the base layer is starting to break down and it's this kind of lovely rich compost that we can start applying onto the beds. But let's take this idea of using wood chip, but actually combine that with a hybrid of a compost bin so we can actually scale up the compost and fertility that we can make and the paths surrounding our beds. I've split this video up into very detailed chapters so you can make sure that you can cover and go back to any particular things because I just want to give you a load of ideas that you can cherry pick what you like and apply in your own garden. So this path in front of me is what I'm actually going to use as the example of turning it into a place to make compost but still a path that I can use to access the beds either side. What I want to say quickly is like you have four sides of a compost bin, the sides for these compost pathways are going to be the beds. So if you have wooden beds, you might want to line the outside with something like a old compost bag that have been cut into strips just to help a bit with longevity. I'm going to be doing it using um, the recycled plastic bed, so I'm not worried about that. So in our other garden, we've got landscape fabric covering the ground and then wood chip. However, for this, I actually think if you've got grass paths, this is ideal because you're going to put down a layer of cardboard and that's just to stop the grass growing through. However, it still allows contact for earthworms and other microbes to actually come and up from the from beneath and help with the compost process. Now, if you've got, say, just hard ground or something, you can absolutely still use this method. I just think it's beneficial to have that touching the ground, just like a compost bin that's over the top of grass or a lawn is going to get a lot more microbes much faster helping to break down versus on a concrete pad. That being said, if you do have hard ground, one of the ways that you can add microbes to either your beds or your composting systems is to make different biological amendments such as Jadam microbial solution or lactic acid bacteria. I've put down the first layer and I just want to talk a bit about working out how much compost you theoretically could make from this. So these two beds are three meters long and the distance is around 55 centimetres wide. And I'm going to be filling this up to a depth, roughly a working depth of around 15 centimetres after compaction of walking across it. And if I did this on both sides of the bed, it would give me the equivalent of half a cubic metre of compost. So that is actually quite a lot of compost that we could then put onto the bed. If we did four of these paths, it would be same as a cubic meter compost bin. So hopefully that can show you how much you can actually make from fairly narrow 
grass spaces and a cubic meter of compost for a small garden goes a really, really long way. So just to put this into context with how beneficial this theoretically could be, if this single pathway here between these two beds was turned and is made to about 15 centimetres depth after compaction and then it broke down, that's quarter of a cubic metre. To mulch a 3 by 1.2 metre bed like the one next to me with 3 centimetres which is on the higher side of compost, you already need a tenth of a cubic metre. So theoretically, one pathway could mulch both beds either side, or you could actually create a shallower path and just mulch one of the beds. So each path translates to mulching one of the beds with compost. So again, very theoretical, but I think this will work. This is a potential way to actually do away with compost bins, which take up a lot of space for small space gardens. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got some wood chip here and this is going to act as kind of the base layer just like a normal path. What this wood chip is also going to do is connect with the ground and help contribute in terms of carbon and also the, the fungi to help with the breakdown. So I'm just going to add a light layer of this on top of the cardboard. So this wood chip has actually come from the clearing of trees that came down during the winter storms. It's great because they actually add a bit of air pocket at the base because now this is where the fun begins, where we actually start treating this like a compost bin. So the first way to start filling up these composting piles is actually with the weeds that you get from the beds. Just chuck it on top. So just like a compost bin, you start bringing your materials to this path. And so I've been putting down cardboard, grass clippings, weeds, etc. And also one of the core parts of a compost is actually water. So if it's really dry like this and you're setting one up, it's a good idea to give it a good soaking. I also thought I'd use some inspiration from Korean natural farming by using some of this leaf mold soil here to actually inoculate the compost pathways with biology. If you don't have access to this, a well broken down home with compost will also do the trick. One of the ways to actually speed up the composting for the system is actually by walking over the material. The reason why is that your weight is going to help break up the organic matter and the organic material and then further help with the breakdown. So whenever possible, walk over this, whenever you visit the garden, add some more material and it's almost like a lasagna that you keep building up, but you try and walk over it as much as possible. My plan for this compost pathway is to keep on adding stuff to it for the next three weeks and then turn it every two weeks, obviously continuing to add material. But the turning does two things. The first thing is add oxygen, which is vital for so many of the microbes that help with the breakdown, but also just for me to see how it's progressing because it might come to a certain stage where it's almost fully broken down, but it's near the end of the season. And then I'll be more than happy to mulch my beds with that as it will be fully sorted by springtime. I want you to actually go out and designate a bit of pathway to turn into a compost pathway and just have fun. Test out different things, see how it goes, treat it the same way as you would as a compost bin. It's just the actual size that's different. And let me know how it goes. If you're struggling to find material to both fill up your compost bins, but also your compost pathways, this video right here will give you eight free examples of materials that you can add to help bulk it out.